Hello, everyone, and welcome to week three of History 311 Online Summer Edition. Coming to you today from the Home Office, I'm finishing up the task of reading, scoring, and commenting on your Homework 1 assignments. I've already done the same for your Discussion Board 1 post, and would like to offer a few suggestions on how to improve your work. First, keep in mind that the intent of our assignments the homework assignments and the discussion board posts, is to give you practice reading, thinking about, and discussing history, rather than simply scribbling down answers to questions. I'm looking for clear and detailed explanations to the questions I ask based on your reading of the Give Me Liberty textbook and our weekly lectures. I expect that what you write is in your own words, not simply cut and pasted from the textbook, or worse, some internet source. I do like quotes, but when you quote from the textbook, you must indicate the copied words with quotation marks and include a page number reference. That way I can look up the quote on my own. You should also indicate the author of the quote, whether our textbook author, Eric Foner, or some person he has quoted. Quotes should never just be inserted without a particular speaker or author behind them. Otherwise, you're liable to find that the copied work looks like plagiarism. And that's something to be definitely avoided. A second, I think you should avoid uh, what I call cherry-picking information from the text and lectures and supposing that it suffices as an answer. You know, picking the first thing you see that seems like it might answer the question. I want you to carefully read the material for overall understanding. Frame your homework answers in your DB posts in your own words and select the most relevant historical materials and, deta and details for support. Be careful not to take a single fact or a single quote and exaggerate it. Well, what's my point here? My point is to be careful. Read carefully. Write carefully. And don't use single examples to create an exaggerated picture of something just because they're convenient. To put it another way, don't rely on loose generalizations to misrepresent things. Strive to be precise and accurate. Identify the context, the who, what, when, and where of your subject, whether discussing single examples or the big picture of American history. So, as in all things historical, we have to read with care. We have to look for contextual distinctions, be aware of bias, maybe even the bias in our own minds, and carefully weigh the evidence before chiming in with our own considered thoughts and perspectives. Yeah, be a careful reader, an attentive thinker, and a thoughtful writer of history. Pay attention to evidence, and don't be afraid to question the popular but often inaccurate assumptions about American history. Because the history you will find by carefully considering the evidence is richer and more meaningful to who we are today than the mythologized and inaccurate history that often passes for truth. Now this week we are studying America's first great expansion of overseas interest during what historians call the Age of Imperialism. As the 19th century gave way to the 20th century, the United States itself transitioned from a mostly rural nation of farmers to an emerging industrial powerhouse of cities and immigrants, a development that led American businessmen and military planners to see the larger world as a proper sphere for American interest, including the annexation of foreign territory and foreign war. And just as the United States was beginning its errand into world affairs, the world was coming to America's shores in the form of immigrants and travelers who arrived in unprecedented numbers during the 1890s and early 1900s in a great wave of immigration. These new immigrants, as they are sometimes called, were different than earlier generations of immigrants in that, for many of them, English was not their native language, Western Europe was not their native home, and Protestant Christianity was not their religion. Instead, they were Catholics and Jews and Orthodox Christians, from Central and Southern and Eastern Europe, just as they were Chinese and Japanese immigrants from the Far East. 
Then, as now, immigration would stir hot passions in the United States. We Americans often boast that we are a nation of immigrants. And it seems equally true that as a nation of immigrants, Americans don't especially like immigrants. So that's a question to keep in mind. What accounts for this uh, complicated relationship between Americans and their immigrant countrymen? This same period of imperialism and immigration is also known as the Progressive Era in American history. Uh, and not surprisingly, it was a time when the expanding sphere of America's economic interests and immigration concerns led to some, uh, some to question whether it might be necessary to reform and improve America's democracy to better accommodate the rapid changes underway. Many of the progressive reforms undertaken then continue to shape and regulate our lives today. And you'll learn, for example, how a tragic industrial fire in 1911 inspired some of those most basic reforms. You should also take note that a majority of the unfortunate victims of that fire were themselves recently arrived immigrants. Now, I will continue the work of scoring and commenting on your submitted assignments. And, as always, I appreciate your patience in awaiting the results. But don't hesitate to get in touch with me if you have any questions. Have a great week, everybody.